Bad boys, bad boys, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? <laughs> Sorry. You're gonna go to jail, that's what you're gonna do. Don't go away. Hello friends and welcome to Fat Guy Productions. I am Paul, coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. Today, indeed, is a model build of another Tom Daniel Classic design kit, the Paddy Wagon. Now, this TD design was released by Monogram in 68, and since then, it has just been a phenomenal smash hit. It has been released over and over again as a model kit, a Hot Wheel, and there are actual real cars of the paddy wagon out there driving around. It's always been a crowd pleaser, and hopefully I can do this build justice. So it's model building day again, and I'm going to go to my stash to find a model. And what I found is this Tom Daniel paddy wagon kit that I started... I, I want to say it's been at least two years plus ago. Uh, I started it. For some reason, I didn't finish it. Maybe it was because I got sick or I was redoing my room. I don't remember exactly, but I put it away and kind of forgot about it. So I really don't even know where I left off. But, hey, this is a perfect kit. Uh, it's a Tom Daniel kit. You know, I got that thing about Tom Daniel kits. So uh, let's take it out and let's get this one finished. So this kit in particular is pretty neat in that it comes with these two police figures already painted and, and done up, and they're really going to add a lot of life to this build. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and it's also neat, I found a pair of sprue cutters in the box. Didn't even know I had them. And while they're not as good as my Tamiya sprue cutters, this is the better pair that you could readily find at... Uh, at Michael's and whatnot. So, yeah, these will be nice to have. So that was cool. And then I find that uh, I've done a lot of pre-building on the body and some on the motor, and then that's where I left it off. So we're just going to pick it up right there, and we're going to finish this project out. So, of course, it's got the, the standard few sprues of parts and uh, the rubber tires, which are really nice. But the thing that really struck me here is the gold-plated parts. Now, normally, I'm not a fan of plating on model kits. I, I think it feels out of scale. And, and I know that's really hard to explain what I'm trying to say here. It feels too chromey and too shiny for these tiny model kits and it just doesn't feel right to me. So normally I would strip any plated parts right down to the bones using my uh, super clean immediately. But because I don't really have to assemble any of these chrome parts, um, you know, it's not like two big halves of a ball where you, you have to glue them together and so you're gonna have this obvious seam that you're gonna have to try and deal with on a plated part. Uh, since I don't have to do anything like that, and this chrome really just has a great look and feel to it. I'm going to roll with it, which is pretty uncommon for me. So this is actually a Tom Daniel kit. and I have never in my life built. Okay, never built this kit. And I don't remember any of what I had done. Because like I said, this, it's probably been about two years since I started this so I am really gonna go through the instructions like this is a brand new kit and I just took the cellophane off of it and I'm really gonna get a grasp on what I need to do also I need to kind of figure out what I have already done and why I did it so we'll we'll work all that out with the instructions before moving ahead So mainly what I was doing 
is I was trying to do a lot of the pre-building of the body and things that needed to be painted as uh, one piece. So uh, I looked at the instructions carefully, figured out what I could put together so that I could paint it all in one pass, and that's what I had done. Now there was a couple pieces that I still hadn't gotten to, so that's where we're going to pick up with this model build. Uh, I've gone through and picked out the last few parts that I can glue onto the body in advance, uh, cut them free from the sprues with my wonderful Tamiya sprue cutters, and now I'm just going to clean them up with a uh, X-Acto knife and some files, and then glue them up before we head over and get some paint on the body. Now this kit is like any other Tom Daniel early monogram model kit. It's not a really complex or heavily detailed model, but that doesn't mean you can't do a really great job and make it a, a showstopper if you want to. So uh, it's just a matter of how much effort you want to put into this and, and what kind of finished product you're looking for. So for this build, I'm probably going to get away with just using three of my glues. I'm going to be using the uh, Tamiya Extra Thin uh, Quick Setting Cement and then the regular Extra Thin Tamiya Cement and some of my Loctite uh, Gel Control Super Glue. So I've gone about as far as I dare with uh, pre-building things, and, and even though I'm an advocate of, of really relying on the instructions, um, I do skip around so that I can paint things as one as much as possible. So I've pretty much done that, and I'm at the paint booth, and I'm going to start by giving this a, uh, a nice coat of Tamiya Fine Primer, which I know, I know, I know, it's pricey, but man, it is worth every penny. First of all, that little can goes way further than you would ever imagine it would. And second of all, the first time you use it, as soon as it's dry, you're going to look at the results and you're going to understand why it's more expensive. So while the Tamiya primer dries, I can turn my attention to other things like some of these gold pieces that I'm going to need. So I can start getting some of those cut off the sprues, cleaned up. And there are a couple little pieces that need to be glued together, but it's nothing to, to lose your mind over. Uh, and I, I don't think it's going to be an issue. So I'm just going to go ahead and forge ahead. Now just a, a side note for any novice model builders out there, um, this Tamiya cement is not going to work with the chrome plating, so you're going to have to scrape that away on the mating parts before you glue them together. But once you've done that, I'm going to use my standard gluing procedure. I'm going to fit the parts, clean everything up, hold them with some firm pressure, and then I'm going to just dab the cement to the seam and let capillary action run through there. The plastic will melt and fuse together and we'll have a really great bond. So the best laid plans of mice and men. Uh, my idea here was to paint this with some uh, Createx Candy 2.0 uh, blue paint. Now this was not a failing of the paint as much as as it was of mine. So um, when we get to that part, I'll explain the disaster and why I ended up having to repaint this. But um, to use the Candy 2.0, I'm going to first put down a base layer of a, a metallic silver. And then we'll let that dry and then we'll press on with the blue color. So I wanted, well, I wanted the blue to be very dark, a very dark navy, uh, I guess. But I wanted it to still have that sort of a spectra flame feel to it. I wanted you to be able to pick up some of the metal flake underneath of it and, and have that kind of a candy 
uh, finish to it. But um, what I ended up doing is I ended up getting too much paint on the big side panels and it really just made it so dark it almost looked black. And you didn't get any of that. You you could tell it was blue because everything else, all the other parts of it were blue. But as he got up into there, it was just so dark, I couldn't hang with it. So anyhow, once I was done painting this, I put it to the side, let it dry, and it was going to get another layer of paint in a different color. So... After the paint was dry, what I decided to do is I turned to Tamiya Royal Blue. Now, I don't know why they call it Royal Blue, because it looks more like a navy to me. Uh, anything but Royal Blue, at least not what I consider to be Royal Blue. So, uh, But hey, it's their paint. They can call it whatever they want. They can call the blue uh, poop brown for all I care. It, you know, it's, it's their product. They can name it anything they want, but it looked like a navy to me. Uh, so I broke that out and put that paint on the car, and I loved it. And so I'll set that aside to dry before we get to decals and clear coat. So, anyhow, with that done, I can now turn my attention to some of the interior pieces. Namely, the uh, seat padding and the padding for the walls in the back, the paddy wagon area part. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just painting all of those with a nice uh, kind of a reddish brown finish and then I'll detail that up a little bit later. So I have all those brown pieces painted and drying because I'm going to do something fun to them a little bit later. Uh, so now the paint on the body is dry I can go ahead and put on the decals. Now the decals are one of the more difficult parts of this build and you know honestly um, you have to be fairly confident in your decaling skills here or my suggestion would be to just pick and choose the ones you think you can work with the best uh, you know you know you don't want to blow it here so you know be strategic you know if, if you're confident knock yourself out because all these decals are really gonna make this thing pop um, and they're actually really nice. They they have a very great gold hue to them, and they're they're durable. They went on beautifully. I uh, really was impressed with the decals. But for instance, just on the one side, you got the big one that says paddy wagon. Then you got the one that says police. So that's two. Then you got a bottom one that's three. Then you got a top one that's four, and a front one that's five. I think it's, so. It's at least five decals just on one side and uh yeah it, it it takes a little confidence to get these things on get them positioned um but it's worth the effort if you are feeling good about it but don't push yourself through a bad position okay you know do what works for you so anyhow i'm gonna get all the decals on this thing and then when it, we're totally happy with it uh, and it's completely dry, then we can seal them up underneath some great clear coat.
unless you want a horrible clear coat finish, it's imperative that you let this dry completely. So I'm not even going to touch it for a couple days. Uh, but I've got plenty to keep myself busy. For example, I can turn myself back and focus on the uh, leather pieces like the seat and the padding and stuff. So I've painted it kind of a rust brown or a reddish brown. And now I'm using a little bit of weathering powder and I'm just running it across the surface so that just the the proud bits of the padded areas the part that gets the wear and tear they're gonna take on a more uh, lighter orangish hue and then down in the crevices and stuff it'll be darker and that should give it a really good uh, used leather look which is what I'm shooting for so uh, I'm just gonna get some of that on my sponge brush and then I'm just gonna rub it across the surface and try and get a nice kind of uniform highlight to the upper surfaces of these pads okay so the decals are completely dry and now I'm gonna make this thing shine like a new penny by using some of my bright vision clear coat this is a, a urethane clear coat and man it gives you the deepest shiniest glossiest wettest look ever honestly you know how I talked about the chrome being out of scale for these cars it's almost out of scale for it it's so deep and wet and shiny and it's two o'clock okay so anyhow ignore that but seriously this bright vision clear coat is amazing I love it and at bright vision if you reach out to them you can buy it in the bigger bottles and and it works out great for model builds so the trick to laying this clear coat down is first you need to build up some layers to seal everything up and smooth everything out so I start with a tack coat and if you're getting the tack coat done right everything should start at start to take on sort of a flat look okay because it's really just a, a powdery misting of this uh, clear coat um, so it should start to take a very very flat sheen then after you have put that down then we can go ahead and start putting on some medium coats where we start to it, it picks up a little more of the gloss um, but really all we're concerned about is building up a couple layers to seal everything in then we finish with our wet coats and that's where the magic happens now I've said this a million times and I'll say it a million more before I make it to the box at the end of my life the trick here is you have to be able to see the clear coat laying down so you need great lighting you really need great lighting and you're laying it down and as you're laying it down you should see it being a wet glossy coat okay you want to be putting it down heavy enough and slow enough to get that wet glossy coat without running okay that's the trick so as soon as you see that you're getting the right distance the right pressure the right speed to get that wet glossy coat maintain that okay let it dry do it again and you'll get this beautiful beautiful deep wet look to your finish so earlier I mentioned that the motor was partially built up and uh, as I was painting the body the motor got the same paint job with the Tamiya royal blue paint and it's dry and now I can start doing some of the details um, this motor is going to get white exhaust pipes and a lot of gold features from the gold uh, plated sprue now on motors and on car building in general you can go as far as you want or as not far as you want on any of these cars I could make this motor I could I could make little fan belts for the front and I could replace the the radiator hose with some braided tube and you know I could put a little distributor in there and spark plug wires and all this other stuff but honestly 
it doesn't need to be that way on every build you do and I'm not doing it that way on this one I'm gonna build this up nice I'm gonna give it some detail but I'm not gonna go hog wild here it's just how I'm feeling you gotta kinda roll with how you feel about the model and what the model is telling you you know if if you want to take your paddy wagon and go insano on the motor it's probably gonna look amazing okay it really will it's just not what I want to do on this casting or you know this plastic model so uh, I'm just gonna do as much detail with what's here and I think it's gonna be cool So look at all the gold pieces that go onto this motor. It has this amazing looking intake with these crossed intake pipes and stuff like that. It's it's really gonna look sweet. And uh, you know, like I said, that's why I stuck with this gold because I think it really works here. So I'm leaving the gold that comes right in the kit and I think it's gonna be fantastic. So I mentioned scraping away plating because the uh, the Tamiya Extra Thin Cement isn't going to work with the plating there. And yeah, I, I'm scraping the plating and doing all the things I'm supposed to do. But this has kind, of, kind of got a uh, these little things that go on the end of the exhaust pipes. They're a little bit tenuous. I don't know how good they're going to stick down. So I'm going to switch over and use my gel control super glue here. I'm going to put a little dab in each... Uh, spot here and then just stick it on there and I think that's the best move but you know hey that's why you have lots of kinds of glue so that you can make these choices as you're building and you decide don't think that's gonna work so well I'm gonna do this instead So I am feeling pretty good about the engine here and all I'm going to do now is I'm using my Tamiya panel liner in black and I'm just applying dabs in, in the different spaces and, and creases and things like that just to give a little hint of realism here and it's really going to make it feel good. Now you tell me that this motor isn't looking sweet. So one of the body walls had the padding for the back paddy wagon section um, and it already had the padding in there. So I ended up having to go back and paint that the, uh, the that reddish brown color and after it dried I had to give it the same treatment as the other wall panels. And so I'm just going to do that and that's really going to add a lot of life to the back area of this vehicle. Okay, so I can start putting more and more of this thing together, and it's really looking pretty sharp. So um, I've got all those uh, rear area parts ready to go, and I'm just going to fit the benches in, and then I can put the side panel walls in, and uh, just do a little bit of detail work back there, uh, and it's really looking sharp. So for the padded sidewalls, there's not really any kind of a, 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 a joint there. It's just kind of they, they flush glue to each other. So I've opted to use the gel control again. I'm just going to put several dots of that around and then just kind of put the panel in place, set it down. It'll stick beautifully. No problems. So I want to get the windshield di oh. So I want to get the windshield dipped in gauzy, but I can't fit it into the jar. So all I'm going to do is use a pipette and suck some of it up and then just kind of squeeze it out and let it run down the length of the windshield. Then I'll wick it off like I normally would and then set it aside to dry. Well, I've done this before and it's worked fine, but for some reason it didn't work today. 
later I'm gonna have to go and get all of that off the windshield I'm gonna actually end up having to sand the windshield and then polish it with my flit um, it just there were a couple spots that dried clumpy and there were a couple other places that didn't appear to have bubbles at first but it ended up looking like it had little bubbles in it so uh, I couldn't stand it um, it might have been fine but I wasn't using it that way so I ended up having to take it all off and decided I wasn't gonna go through that again so I just polished it as nice as I could with flits and called it a day normally this would work it was an epic fail this time so, um, no, it's really starting to come together, and I'm doing a little test fit of the motor, and it's it's going so perfectly, why not glue it in? So, I've got my uh, Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, and I'm just going to dab it at the connection points and let it uh, set, and the motor's in, and we can go ahead and push forward. So somebody explain this one to me because I don't get it. This kit comes with like 7 million decals. And they couldn't give you a dashboard decal. I, I don't know. Go figure. There are gauges and things molded in. But, uh, you know, there th that wasn't enough. So I'm using a little bit of silver paint. And I'm just putting uh, a little bit of a fill in there. Just to, to bring the dashboard a little bit of life. Uh, because otherwise it's just nothing it's absolutely nothing so I had to come up with something now I could have probably whipped off some decals but I didn't think it was necessary to go that far the the little silver dots on the dashboard are gonna be more than enough okay so I've got the wheels on I've got uh, most of the control arms on and uh, really all I gotta do is put some of the uh, gold accent pieces that go down on the bottom of the car I'm gonna put those in place and uh, then we'll flip it over and we can start putting on some of the details on the top part so I just wanted to show you this one thing on putting on the control arms um, sometimes that can be really difficult to do okay especially because right now you're you're starting to deal with some pretty fragile assemblies so what I'm doing is I've got a little dab of the gel control on the one side. I'm going to kind of hook that into its spot, quickly put the other piece in place and just let it sit there while the gel control grabs hold. Then on the other end, I'll put a dab of my Tamiya fine, uh, Tamiya thin cement and let that bind the other end. So I'm using both glues on the one part and it works out really nice for me. So I'm just going to get the front grill all together. Uh, you glue the little uh, top piece on, and then you got to put the headlights in and stuff like that. Um, a couple important things is when I'm gluing the lenses into the headlight cans, uh, I'm using the Testers Clear Window Cement. Now, Testers is stop and make and product, so I'm going to need to get some more of that stuff and stockpile it because I think it's invaluable. Um, so I'm going to have to snag some more of that. And then also I'm going to use some of the Tamiya panel liner on the uh, screen part of the grill to give it a little bit of realism and make it feel fun. And, you know, just those, it's those little things that really bring your models to life. Now, I absolutely enjoy painting figures, and I'm, I'm okay at it. I, I don't think I'm the best at it, but I'm certainly not the worst at it. So uh, if these had been unpainted, it wouldn't have been any issue, but they are painted, and they're painted really well. So they're going to go in straight out of the box, and I think they're going to look awesome. So I'm literally going to cap this whole project off by finishing it up attaching the roof now I've painted the roof flat black and I'm just gonna kind of wedge it in there glue it down and this project is done I'll take the last cop stick them on the back step and it looks fantastic and it was a lot of fun
Well, there you have it, my Tom Daniel design paddy wagon. This, like every other TD design kit, was super fun to build, and I loved every minute of it. I hope you loved it, too. If so, please give my video a like, click subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification bell so you never miss one of my model build videos. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I really do love to hear from you guys. Well, that should do it for today. I'm going to get out of here. But never forget, works of art make rules. Rules never make works of art. Until next time, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions saying be good.